this video is about why diseases such as type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, cancer, and obesity are common among plant-based diet eating groups such as those who live in India. It has been widely and clearly demonstrated that a diet rich in plant-based whole foods can significantly decrease the incidence of chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, cancer, and obesity. This evidence presents a compelling paradox in the Indian context where the vast majority of the population follows a predominantly plant-based diet. Even among those who identify as non-vegetarians, the diet is largely composed of plant-based components. For example, for those who take non-vegetarian dishes, often eat a large portion of rice, which is plant-based. And also, other diets like those are idli or chapati, so on and so forth, they are all from plant-based components. Given this dietary pattern, it raises a critical question. Why are diseases like diabetes, coronary artery disease, and stroke so common, and why are they affecting younger individuals at an alarming rate? A closer examination reveals that several factors, both dietary and environmental, may be contributing to health crisis. So what are the proposed causes for rise of chronic diseases in this predominantly plant-based dietary group? The high incidence of these diseases among the Indian population may be attributed to a combination of modern lifestyle changes and environmental challenges that undermine the benefits of plant-based diet. Number one being hidden sugars and processed foods. While the diet may be plant-based, it's often not free from harmful additives. What are those? Sweetened beverages. The widespread practice of adding sugar to common beverages like tea, coffee, and milk contributes to an excessive daily sugar intake. Next, Processed to hot carbohydrates. The consumption of highly processed foods such as white rice, white bread, and refined wheat products replaces nutrient-dense whole grains and can lead to rapid blood sugar spikes. Next is excessive salt. The liberal use of salt in both home-cooked meals and processed snacks is a major contributor to hypertension and other cardiovascular issues. Next group is fats and dairy consumption. Dairy consumption, while often considered a source of nutrition, the consumption of mammal's milk, particularly from cows, and the use of butter in cooking may be contributing factors. These products, are, these products are high in saturated fats, which can negatively impact heart health if consumed in large quantities. Use of cooking oil. Use of cooking oils high in saturated fats increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. For instance, Coconut oil has approximately 92% of saturated fats, with palm oil has around 50 to 55%. Lifestyle and environmental factors. Lack of physical activity. Sedentary lifestyle, increasingly common in urban and semi-urban areas, is a primary risk factor for obesity and cardiometabolic diseases. Next is environmental pollution. Air and water pollution have become a severe public health concern in many parts of India. Exposure to polluted air and contaminated water can introduce toxins that contribute to inflammation and cellular damage, increasing the risk of various diseases. Toxic contaminants. 
The presence of toxic heavy metals and the chemicals such as insecticides in vegetables and other food sources can compromise health over time. Restaurant and packaged foods. Many restaurant meals and packaged snacks are high in salt, oils, and other additives to enhance flavor and self life. These items often contain high levels of calories, coloring agents, sugars, and saturated fats, which can negatively impact health. Financial stress. The pressures of globalization and modern life have led to increased financial stress, which is a known risk factor for both physical and mental health issues, including heart disease. What are the potential solutions for a healthier future? Addressing these issues require a holistic approach that combines individual responsibility with broader societal changes. Number one, dietary modifications. There are seven components to it. Number one, eliminate added sugars. Adapt the practice of drinking black coffee and tea without added sugar or milk. Avoid all sugary drinks, including fruit juices, especially for individuals above 35. Prioritize whole grains. Replace processed grains with whole grains to increase fiber intake and better regulate blood sugar levels. Limit processed foods. Make a conscious effort to eliminate all processed foods from the diet. Mindful dairy consumption. Minimize intake of dairy products. If dairy is consumed, focus on options with probiotics like buttermilk and yogurt in moderation. Appropriate caloric intake. Be mindful of daily calorie consumption to maintain a healthy body weight. Clean produce. Wash vegetables thoroughly before cooking or eating to reduce exposure to chemicals and insecticides. Cooking oil. Use oils with low saturated fat content such as extra virgin olive oil and sunflower oil. The next big component is individual health practices. Regular exercise. Incorporate regular physical activity into your daily routine. Nutritional supplements. Consider vitamin supplements, especially for vitamin B12 and vitamin D, after consulting with a healthcare professional, as these deficiencies are common. Avoid unprescribed supplements. Steer clear of high-performance steroids or other unregulated herbal supplements. Regular checkups. Ensure early health checkups, especially for adults over 35, to monitor and address potential health issues early. Finally, stay up to date on vaccinations. Follow vaccination schedule recommended by Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. That's called ACIP. The finally, very important, societal and policy level changes. Cleaner environment. Implement strict government policies to control industrial emissions and vehicle pollution to ensure cleaner air in cities and villages. Regulation of agrochemicals. Enhance strict controls on the usage of insecticides and other agricultural chemicals to protect the food supply. Safe water supply. Ensure that all communities have access to clean, portable water. By addressing these multifaceted issues, India can move toward a healthier future, leveraging the strength of its traditional diet while mitigating new risks posed by modern life and the industrialization. This concludes the video on why diabetes, coronary heart disease, stroke, cancer, and obesity are common in Indian population. Please pass this message to everyone in your family and friend circle. Our aim is to disseminate this information to each and everyone so that they will have a healthier 
lifestyle and healthier generation. Thanks again for watching and disseminating to others. We'll see you in next video.